Hey, Ty, how fired up are you guys coming off the big win going into Charlotte with a sold out crowd already announced there? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's a great opportunity for us. It's a, it's a good football team we're going to play. Um, you know, we have obviously the odds are uh, against us right now. So I think that's a uh, even bigger motivation for us to come out and, uh, um, you know, play hopefully better the way we did. we played decent. I think on the offensive side that we can have a lot more points on the board that we we left out there on Saturday. So I think coming to this week of practice, um, knowing that we have a we have a great opportunity to to kind of keep the momentum going, uh, and hope and, and just uh, attack each day at practice with uh, uh, enthusiasm and confidence uh, throughout the week. What did it mean to you not only to have a chance to come into the game against North Texas, but to do as well as you did? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a blessing to be able to go out there and, and play. Um, you know, like Coach Vesper and Coach Chestnut and them always say, you always one rep away. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be playing, uh, but, you know, you, you you attack the reps and, and mentally the game plan as if you were playing just to uh, make sure if anything were to happen. Unfortunately, you know, Blake went down. Um, but I think, uh, you know, it was a great opportunity for me. I didn't think I was going to come back in the second half, and I didn't know about Blake until after uh, that drive happened. I thought I was just going to come in do one-minute drill. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, everyone did a great job. Offensive line, wide outs made plays. Uh, for us to score right before half. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it was a great opportunity. Um, I appreciate Coach Chesson and Coach Jasper trusting me to be able to, you know, go out there and, and, and run the offense. Um, so, yeah. And how was it playing without the knee brace? You said it's the first time you've played without the knee brace. How about that? Yeah, it, it was great. It, on the, the first time I was scrambling, I, I was running and it felt completely different than than when I when I have it on. It felt like my leg could actually move around a little more. So, uh you know, it, it was it was definitely a really cool experience to be able to do that because for so long I've had a knee brace on, so it felt a lot more freeing than it than it had in the past. And are you going to be wearing that knee brace uh, the rest of the season, or is it off now? No, it's off now. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just I'm gonna uh, try to keep up with the you know rehab and stuff like that to try to keep it off. That was kind of the game plan this week because I wasn't taking as many reps in practice, so it was kind of just like I felt like it was a good time to kind of uh, get away from it because it's been a while, like. And the doctors and everyone said it, it, that it should be fine. So I was like, all right, let's, let's, let's do it. Well, thanks a lot and good luck in Charlotte. Thank you. I appreciate it. Wags. Ty, could you talk a little more about the knee brace situation? What A, why why did you take it off? What led to that? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, a bunch of different things. I think first off, it felt just like it was like so restricting to what I was running and trying to cut and do all this other stuff. It like – it doesn't help wearing like an offensive line knee brace to, to, to play quarterback and, and especially with the offense that we're in. Um, so I felt like this week, knowing that I wasn't going to be starting, uh, it was a way kind of easier way to kind of like dive into uh, not wearing the knee brace and trusting it without the knee brace. Uh, since I wasn't having to, you know, do as many cuts, all this, it was kind of like an easier way to kind of just kind of slowly get back into not wearing a knee brace. Um, and then on Saturday when I got put in, um, didn't really even think about the fact that I wasn't wearing it because it it's felt very uh, it's felt like good running around, cutting around, stuff like that. So on Saturday when we were playing, I just you know played, didn't think about it, and it and it felt really good uh, after the game too, and especially during the game when I was running that I didn't have uh, that like restriction on my knee or on my leg when I was running. So are you going to do that going forward? You're going to play without the brace? Yeah, I mean, I think it felt really well, uh, and I think just staying on top of rehab and recovery to uh, make sure that I'm, you know, warming up properly and stuff like that is probably the biggest thing. Uh, so I think going forward, that's 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 the plan. So, um, have you have you always worn the brace ever since you came to Navy? Because I know you were coming off of a knee injury in high school. Is this the first time in your Navy career that you did not wear a brace? Yeah, so I. Came in, I never wore it in high school, never wore one in high school, but then, uh, well, kind of a thing, maybe a little bit, I'm not sure, I forget, but uh, freshman year, I didn't play, so I didn't wear one, I I just was on scout team and stuff, but I never wore one freshman year, and then Marshall game, my sophomore year was the first time, my first game, and I didn't wear one, but then I hurt my right knee uh, in like the late, like fourth quarter or whatever it was, um, so then ever since that game, my first game of starting, I've worn a knee brace on the either right knee or the left knee. My sophomore year was right knee, and then this year or last year, this year it was left knee. So my sophomore year and junior year was right, and then now it was left. But now this is my first time like actually playing without either one, like longer than just like a couple snaps. So, so you obviously have experienced uh, injury. Can you have you talked to Blake? Try to you know lift him up a little bit. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, you know, um, when he comes back, I think uh, I'll talk to him a little bit more because, I mean, I've definitely been on both sides of it where, uh, you know, I kind of was in the same situation, had my first start and then got hurt right like in that first game. Uh, and that's something that, you know, it's kind of mentally taxing because you have questions on why it happened that way. But I think, uh, you know, he's going to bounce back and, and come back better. Uh, I think definitely he was – I mean, that's why I thought I was coming in for the one minute and he was going to go back in second half. So when I found out that he uh, got hurt, it, you know, it was kind of deflating because I was – I didn't I, – I felt bad for him because I know how it feels to to have come so far and, and uh, you know, want to get back out there. But uh, he'll be back, and I think that, you know, it'll it'll – kind of give him a, a, a different type of hunger to get back out there and play, uh, knowing that he was he he had it and then it was kind of taken away from him. But So obviously the offense took a step forward against North Texas, but it, you know, when Coach Newberry said this and Coach, it seems as though you're this close to really breaking loose and having a massive game, 40 points, whatever, 500 yards. Do you sense that, Ty? Yeah, I think we all do. I mean, I think, you know, Played a couple of those passes. There, there goes. There's, there's more points on board. Obviously, the defense uh, got the ball back for us and gave us a great opportunity for Alex to score uh, that second time. Um, but I think you know we're, we're so close. And every time we watch film, it's like we, we say that we're so close. We're so close. Um, and I think that's something that all of us want to stop saying and see it happen. So I think that's, that's the biggest emphasis this week is, is we can see what happens when we do execute the way we need to execute. Um, so just come out each week. Uh, mentally focused and prepared to to play like we're going to play on Saturday and, and uh, build that confidence throughout the week so that when it comes to Saturday, it feels like it's just something that's another normal day of practice. So, Well, that's what I was going to ask you about the play-action passes. It's the second game in a row that some opportunities downfield were missed. How, how critical is this start? Because those are touchdowns, if not setting up touchdowns. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's a big thing that, you know, they, they've told me is that, like, uh, the passing game, we, you know, we, I got to hit those, those those passes. Those those are those that will set us up, like you said, for for points, if not give us the points during that pass. Um, so, you know, that's something that, like I said, throughout week of practice, you know, we, we we're going to come out and I got to be be sharp and focusing on that, um, and and trying to make sure that every pass feels like a game rep, so that when it comes to the game time, that it, um, it feels just like practice had, and, and I know that I'll hit the hit the passes uh, down the field because those are things that. Are, are huge for our type of offense because we need those big plays to kind of spark the the run game to make them appreciate that a little more. So, thanks, Morgan Uber. Thanks, Scott. Ty, Morgan Uber. Nice to meet you. You know, I'm curious just to expand a little bit more. You find out early in the week last week with Blake and Braxton, they're going to go. You know, how did your role adjust more on the mental side of things? I know you always practice like you're going to play, but mentally, what adjustments did you have that, that challenged you a little bit there? Yeah, so I mean, uh, when I found out beginning of the week, um, it kind of changed from, you know, the the starting mindset of like, okay, like, I got to make sure like I practice, I'm doing this, doing this and that. It's kind of like a, like a, a role, like a, a coach almost to them. Cause they were, you know, two young guys. Um, it was Blake's going to be Blake's first start. So kind of just trying to be in a role position where I felt like I wish I would have had my sophomore year when I first started. Um, Cause I didn't really, we didn't really have, it was kind of me and X and size. So no one that was really like older that had played a lot of games. So I just found it kind of being there for them if they had questions. Um, if they were nervous, you know, kind of tell them that, you know, it's, it's just another game, it's another football game. Uh, you've been in a bunch of them. But, um, you know, I just have to play my role. Like, we always say, play your role, know your, know your role. And I think uh, Coach Jasper was emphasizing the fact that, you know, like, make sure that uh, you're sitting there, you're trying to help them out and trying to get them along. Because at the end of the day, we all want to win. Uh, it didn't really matter who was playing because at the end of the day, that's like, that we we wanted to win. We wanted to, you know, we were always so close, so close. And so I think that we were just all ready to win one. And I, I was trying to play my part as best I could. Um, and obviously, you know, unfortunately, Blake, Blake got hurt. And um, they had called me to go in. And I just try to keep the offense rolling how Blake had, had started it off. So. With this offense, to have Alex uh, Tezka in the way that, you know, he's really just exploded on the scene here these past few weeks, you know, how, how do you benefit personally um, from his game, not just having now Daba, but also, you know, another fullback here in this offense? Yeah, I mean, him and Daba, it's great to have running backs like him and Daba in the backfield. Uh, the offensive line has embraced uh, the way that Coach Chestnut and Coach Ingram have, have gotten after him completely. Um, and they make it a lot easier for, for them to run as well because, 
Uh, they have a lot of movement up front where they can, you know, create holes for for Dobbin and Alice to run through. Uh, and it definitely makes our job easier at quarterback because we know, you know, if they, sometimes we don't make the right read, they can still make something out of nothing. Uh, and that's something that you that's become uh, like evident when you watch them run is sometimes you'll be like, ah, well, they're tackled and then they just pop out the other side somehow. And you're like, oh, well, it makes, <laughs> makes it a lot easier for us. So. Uh, you know, everyone's played their part. Uh, the A backs, wideouts, O line, everyone up front per- blocking on the perimeter uh, has been great and has improved so much, I think, each week. Uh, and it's definitely made my job, and I think, Alex and their job a lot easier to to be able to find running lens. The last one for me, you know, for you it being the first time in your career to, you know, be the backup, what did you learn about yourself through that week, through that game, you know, coming off the bench and being prepared when your number was called? Yeah, it was definitely a different, you know, experience, I think, because uh, when I got hurt my sophomore year, that was like, I dressed out, but I knew I wasn't going to play. So I was just like in a different, you know, so kind of like the same role. But this time, you know, it was like third string. I was I was down there in the depth chart and I was just like, OK, well, um, being the back of it kind of definitely takes. I told Coach Newberry, I was like the stress and like the the worry of, you know, the the, the night before a game. It wasn't wasn't really there because I was like, OK, well. You know, I'm here to I'm here to help them out. Here to uh, you know make sure they need anything. I, they can ask me, help them out. I was trying to draw stuff up on the sideline for them, uh, so they could see like what the defenses was, how to understand how the defense plays. Um, and I think that part helped me out when I did go in the game because I knew what they were doing. I had an understanding of what their defense was trying to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it definitely Coach Newberry told me before too. He said, I think you know if you did get in, you know, you probably play a great game because you're not nervous at all or anything for it. Um, and that opportunity came and, and it was funny because, you know, just there was no stress in my in my game, like my preparation for the game, because I didn't really think that going in was going to be part of the part of the day for me. But, um, you know, it, it just had played out the way it did. And it was, it, was, it was a great feeling to, you know, come out with a win. Is that, I mean, free lose playing mindset, something you can carry with you now forward throughout the rest of the season? Yeah, I think so. I, mean, I, would, I would hope so. I think, you know, that kind of helped me realize that you know, sometimes you don't have to take things as serious as it is because at the end of the day, like we fell in love playing this game because it was a it was a kid's game. It's a kid's a kid's game, but uh, you know, it doesn't really change at that level. Obviously the speed gets faster, but I think going out there with the mindset that, you know, play freely, play fun, you know, have fun out there, uh definitely helps you play better because you're not worried about, you know, making mistakes. You're not worried about uh, what if I do this wrong, what if I do that wrong? You know, you just go out there and play the game that you've played since we were five or six years old. Um, and it definitely helps out a lot more, I think, than than I realized uh, since before that. Thank you, Ty. Appreciate it. Thank you. Pete Medhurst. Ty, with such a dramatic change in roles, did did you at any point during the week get a sense that, hey, you know, people are going to be watching me to see um, how I accept this role, how I prepare? Do I prepare the same way? Uh, do I mope? Because am I selfish? Because they're in athletes in that situation. Sometimes that happens. Did you get a sense that maybe people are going to be watching you to say how you would prepare, uh, even though you were given a different role for last week? Yeah, I think 100 um, percent. You know, me and Coach Chestnut talked, me and Coach Jasper talked. And, you know, they said a lot on how I would be, react would be, you know, how the team, like how it helps the team. Because I think, you know, I've, I mean, I played in a lot of games. Um and it wasn't the best situation that I'd want to be in, but at the same time, you know, you have to understand, like we say, uh, what role you play and how you can help the team in the role you're at. And I think that's like kind of how I went out to practice. I didn't, I tried not to mope. I tried not to be, you know, feel sorry for myself because at the end of the day, um, you know, we all, we all have that role that we want to play. And I think uh, I kind of enjoyed a lot trying to help out, you know, the younger kids, even like the freshmen that were, that are on JV, um, just kind of understanding like defenses and coaching them up and stuff like that, because obviously I had a little bit more uh, leeway, free time to kind of hang out with them and help them understand stuff. Uh, and that kind of brought me a lot of satisfaction because I felt like I could help them in ways that, you know, I don't always get to uh, because I'm so, you know, inside like the offensive uh, game plan that week and what we're doing and all that. Um, but I mean, I think just the way that anyone goes about their attitude, whatever what situation that they're in, uh, says a lot about them as a person, as their character. And I think for me, I wasn't going to let the, the the situation that I was in uh, dictate the happiness that I had and and the person that I was going to be out there. I was going to still be a happy person, uh, try to make people laugh, try to, you know, help them out if they needed help. And I think that, uh, you know, it went a long way in, in, in how I prepared and, and how uh, hopefully how people saw how I was out there and wasn't, you know, feeling down. But um, 
you know, yeah, I think that regardless of what situation you're in, I don't think that it should dictate how you, how you, you know, act. I don't think football should make you, uh, you know, sad or mope around. I think you should, you know, be grateful that we're able to be out there, be able to play the game. And I think that's kind of how I went about it. Well said. I don't think there's any, uh, you know, you, look, you can look at the eye test, you can look at the analytics. There's no doubt this offense is continuing to improve, particularly over the last three games. You know, where's your comfort level in this new offense and some of the nuances that are different from what uh, you'd been asked to do uh, in the past? Yeah, uh, you know, there's definitely a couple of uh, twists and turns that are different than what I've been uh, used to running triple, the base triple that we that I've learned for the past three or so, four years. Um, I think, you know, each day it's, it's you know, it's kind of like a constant reminder. You have to tell my, I have to tell myself on what the, the, the goal of the plays we call are and how uh, Coach Chestnut wants it to be ran uh, because I, it's been an old way for so long, like the old way I've learned it for so long. So I think just that constant reminder to myself of like what we need to do, like certain things uh, in the game plan is something that I, I feel I'm getting com- more comfortable with. Um, and I need it. I just want to keep practicing and make sure that I kind of cement that in my brain on how certain plays are ran and what we need to do with them. Uh, but I think overall confidence in, in the way the offense is and the, the way that coach Chester wants to be run is, is definitely um, increasing and getting better each and every day. Um, but, you know, like I said, I just go to practice each day and try to work on the stuff that I may not be so sure in or may not feel as confident in uh, is definitely something that each week I feel like I'm, I'm trying to be better at. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, we'll make one more trip around. Scott Wyckoff. Ty, how cool is it that not only is this offensive line probably one of the the best, fourth best right now, blocking lines for the run in the nation, but the time they're giving you now to pass and throw the ball. I mean, you're getting great protection. Yeah, they, that's something that, you know, they've we've all recognized too. I talked to them about it. Uh, it's because we actually, you know, I feel like we – we do a lot of uh, practice, a lot of different scenarios and situations. Coach Chestnut and Coach Ingram do a great job uh, with with them on that because, you know, um, I feel like when it comes into a game, the amount of times we do it at practice, the amount of time we spend on it at practice, it comes at the game and and they've basically seen every situation that can happen. Uh, so it just comes very natural for them. And it definitely feels a lot better in the pocket uh, now than it has um, to be able to throw because, you know, I have that time and that uh, – confidence in them that they'll, they're going to be able to, you know, protect and, and give me a chance to throw the ball to, to the wide outs or a backs or whatever it may be. So uh, kudos to them. They've done an amazing job. Coaches have done a great job. Um, and it, I think it's just going to get better as the year goes on. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Obviously you're in an interesting situation here moving forward uh, this week. You and Braxton are now battling for the job, but, you're a senior leader, a veteran, and he's a plebe learning. Um, you do also need to be a mentor to him. Is that an odd situation to be in competition with a guy, but also trying to help him get better so in moving forward in his career, he can help Navy? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think of it really as a – like, to me, I never, I never really thought about, you know, like obviously sophomore year or freshman year when me and X were competing, I never really looked at it as a competition because, you know, at the same time you're playing against – you're playing on the same team at the end of the day. So I never really looked at it as um, a competition. Uh, I think that it, it does, you know, sometimes feel like that. But, um, I mean, I want to help him in any way that he can. I t- me and Coach Jasper talking. I mean, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm a senior on my way out. He's a freshman coming in. And and I want to be able to prepare him and help him uh, learn as much as he can while I'm here uh, as, as I can. Uh, but, I mean, obviously, you know, you go to practice, you, you take reps, you, t- you kind of split them. Um, but I think, you know, that I kind of just go out there and kind of try to be better in my ways. Uh, if he needs help, I'll help him in his ways. Um, but we, I think we both know that it's a long season. Uh, probably both of us are going to play. And so I think that it doesn't really – it kind of takes the competition and the awkwardness out of it, knowing that both of us are probably going to be able to help the team in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so I don't really look at it as that competition because I think, you know, at some time both of us are going to have to help each other win. So it's kind of just helping him prepare as much as I can to to be able to play when it's, when it's time comes. So uh, your mom's been around town for a few weeks, and I see her taking you to Main Street to really fine restaurants. You're eating well lately, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we're. <laughs> you know, she's been here for what two weeks now, two and a half. But she'll be here for probably like two more. So you know, she's having a great time uh, hanging out around here, and it's, it's great to have her, honestly, because you know, 
if I'm if I'm hungry or anything like that, you know, she's she's only a call away. So, but she she told me when she first got here the first night, I asked her to bring me food. She's like, "Yeah, I'm not doing this every night." You know that, right? So I got to kind of pick and choose uh, when I'm when I'm really hungry or not. So, but it, it's it's awesome having her here and having her be around because it kind of feels like I'm back in Florida with around her all the time. Thanks, Ty. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah, Ty, I just have one uh, as a follow-up to your answer to Pete, just in the adjustments with this triple option, you know, with Coach Chestnut, some things that, you know, the biggest challenge, I guess, you've had to adjust to and rewiring your brain of things that you had been used to in the old system, um, you know, the hardest, I guess, adjustment of something you've had to sort of rethink or relearn. Uh, yeah, so it's definitely been our our zone option uh, plays. It's the, It's a different way of it's triple, but it's it's a different way of running. It's a lot more of kind of lateral running and kind of the opposite of the way that I have been, you know, taught where it's downhill uh, inside the defenders, making them choose. Uh, it's kind of a different way of doing it. And the way that we that we've been coached to do it is kind of, you know, you stretch out, stretch out the defense as long as you can until uh, you can get the ball on the perimeter. And so that's that's something that's different. Uh, but I think that's, you know, we worked on it a lot in fall camp and uh, throughout the weeks of practice and that's something that is a big emphasis that we we're trying to do and so I think that's probably the biggest thing that has been a change for me but uh, I think just kind of trying to attack it these days is something that uh, I really am trying to work on so awesome thank you thank you hey Ty outside of a hug from mom what, what's what been the key to getting through all of the stuff that you individually have encountered uh in, in your time here uh at the academy yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think, you know, I think everyone I've met has said, you know, they come to the academy, um, and, you know, it gives you a great opportunity. And, you, I mean, you come here, but you stay for the people because, you know, there's a lot of times um, where, you know, you may not be in the best place. You may, you know, may be down. Uh, school may not be going as well. Football may, be not, not be, may not be going as well. But uh, I think the guys here, the football team, uh, my friends I've met here uh, are really like the reason that I've been able to stay and make it through this place is because, you know, you always have someone there to talk to. Uh, we all live in the same building, so if you need someone to talk to or go hang out with, kind of get your mind off of things, just walk to their room, hang out with them. Um, and I think that's something the biggest thing that a lot of people have learned here is that uh, it's a place you can't really make it through by yourself because if you do, you're going to end up feeling a, a very alone uh, while you're here. So I think just having friends that you know you can count on to to kind of help you forget about whatever you may be going through and just hang out with and and kind of just relax is is definitely the biggest part here because it can definitely be overwhelming. Uh, with all the stuff that you have on your plate and on your shoulders. So do you feel at the same time too, that your, your character in some ways, and I'm not just talking about football either um, at a place like this is, is tested literally uh, every day and, and people are observing you uh, as someone they feel clearly is potentially a future leader here in our, our country upon post, uh, you know, obviously graduation. Yeah, I mean, I think for sure you're always getting looked at each and every day, even, I mean, tourists and whatever it may be, people that look at you uh, and they see you and, and they see someone who obviously they they are counting on to, you know, be able to lead people in the future. Um, and I think that, you know, that's something that you kind of have to understand that when you come here, uh, that you're kind of always on this under this microscope and people are always looking at how you react to things, how you do things. Um, but I mean, I think that's, at the end of the day, uh, the person that you are it shouldn't change based off of like the situation that you're in. Like I feel like I've said is 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 I feel like if you lose yourself and kind of like lose like I'm I'm a very like happy go just fun person that I just like to go and enjoy life. Um, and I think if you kind of lose that that about you here, it's something that uh, can kind of you know ruin your day because you know you're kind of you don't feel like you're yourself. So I think for me that's something that I've always tried to keep and keep grounded is is, is kind of keep everything lighthearted and not take th things too seriously because. I feel like that makes me happiest in life when I'm not stressed about things and not not going around feeling like I oh I should have done this should have done that and I feel like just kind of going about your business and the character that you have I feel like is also your personality so uh, I think having a good personality good outlook on life here definitely take takes a, a a lot of stress off your shoulder so uh, last one for me I mean too I mean let's face it you're you're playing Division One football you're an elite athlete uh, the moments in your life where someone has told you that you know you might not be good enough have probably been much fewer than most of us. Uh, initially, what was the sting of that moment like? And then when you got in the game, uh, all of a sudden, you know, is there any extra motivation to, to show that, Hey, 
I, I, I can still be your guy uh, when you guys call my number. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you, you get told that, uh, they're going to move forward with the other two quarterbacks. Uh, it hurts. It definitely hurts at first. You know, you – especially, have, like, being a senior, you know, you, you've put in a lot here. But at the same time, I understood where Coach Chestnut was coming from. I understood that, you know, definitely the the way that our option offense was running, there's more strengths that Blake and Braxton have uh, that I didn't have. And I, I understood that completely, and I think that was a big factor in, in how he went about it and what he – the decision he made. Um, and I think for me it was like, okay – I can. I have two choices to make about that. What, I, what like the way I want to go about this? I can either like just be like, screw this, I'm done with this, I don't care, or I can go out there and try to help out them as much as I can. Um, but I mean, I think when I got in the game, um, it was more of kind of proving it to myself that I, I could still do it. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, okay, I think, like, you know, I didn't do much in practice all week, kind of just helping out in the way, any way I can. But I think for me, it was kind of proving it to myself first that 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 I can still, you know, run the option. I can still run the offense uh, and I can, they can count on me if they need me to play for them. You know what I mean? So uh, I think, you know, it was a great feeling to be able to go out there and win. I think there was a great team when defense played a great job for us. Uh, offense, we, I think we, we left a lot out there, but I think we had a pretty consistent game. Um, you know, and it was, it was a great feeling just to be able to build that trust, I think, back into uh, the way that I can play for, for Coach Chestnut, Coach Jasper and all of them, so. Coach, looking back on Charlotte, but also looking ahead, uh, looking ahead to Charlotte now, what is it about specifically the running game now, where each week it seemed as though the guys are taking it up another notch? Yeah, I think you know, obviously, as the season goes, um, offensively, it's very much you know getting in a rhythm, right? Guys coming together and uh, offensive line starting to do things more consistently and as well as our skill players, you know, quarterbacks with Reed. So, you know, offensively, you expect to get better as the season goes because it's a repetition thing. So I think that, you know, that has uh, everything to do with it. And, and the guys, uh, you know, they're playing more confident. So it's absolutely uh, encouraging to see, you know, the growth every week. And uh, it's very important that we do that again this week. The way that the running game is established and setting up the passing game, I know, you're frustrated by the execution sometimes in the passing game, but the fact that the players are getting open and people are doing what they need to do to get to that point. Yes, absolutely. No question about it. You, you know, you're seeing uh, guys get open and uh, you know, with that, you know, our guys are, are understanding, Hey, if we'll go execute a little bit, we're going to create chunk plays and, and additional points uh, you know, and I think we're doing they're doing a great job of going to practice and and working hard on getting better and more consistent in the past game. Uh, I know just yesterday, even though it was a Monday, uh, you know, and, 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 and kind of a light practice, you could tell the attention to detail, particularly in the past game was greater. So that's encouraging. How do you like the progress of the tight ends? Everything new for them and new yeah. for you working with them. And I, I know it's, it's a work in progress, but uh, how are you happy with that? Yeah, I am. You know, we've got some bigger wideouts who, you know, are able to function kind of as hybrid tight ends, you know, and so that's allowed us to to use some formations and use, you know, some of our bigger wideouts in that capacity. And, and that's great. You know, that's going to help us continue to build and move towards uh, next year when, when we have some, you know, guys that we've recruited specifically to be tight ends in the fold. Uh, so it's only going to help, you know, with the familiarity of of using that position in that way. So, yep. What do you see from the Charlotte team that uh, you've been able to look at? And I know they've played a real tough schedule. Yes, they have. They're, they're, they're better than their record indicates. Um, you know, they've done a good job in the transfer portal on defense. Um, you know, they're big and deep on the defensive line. Uh, their linebackers are big and they run well. Um, so, you know, we have, we have a great challenge, uh, you know, on Saturday uh, with their defense. Their personnel is – is much improved from last year. Are you happy with the time of possession with the offense as it's moved along? Yes, I I am, but you know, I'd always like more. <laughs> you know, you always want to have the ball more and uh and we need to continue to sustain drives and hang, hang on to the ball uh longer, that's for sure. And especially in a road game against a team that's hungry like this to establish those longer drives to maybe take some wind out of their sails. No question about it. You know, we need to establish long drives, stay on the field uh, as long as we can, and then finish drives. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. Wags. 
Coach, can you talk about what Ty did on Saturday as far as coming off the bench? Um, yeah, absolutely. He did a great job, you know, came in, obviously, and let us down the field in the one-minute drive to close out the half. Uh, threw a great ball to Kent, uh, to Nathan down there, and uh, who made a great catch, uh, and then came out in the second half and 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 had a hot hand. So, you know, we were able to to move the ball and and do some things and ultimately win the game. So, very pleased with Ty. He did a great job through the week in preparation. Um, so it paid off for him on Saturday. Obviously, I'm sure he was disappointed with you know finding out from Coach Newberry that he was going to be third on the depth chart, but. You know, he chose not to hang his head. And did you like the way he responded and the way that he you know, mentored the younger guys? Absolutely. No question. He was phenomenal throughout the week in meetings and on the practice field. Uh, and he and I had a very candid conversation on Monday. You know, I, I told him, I said, look, I've, I've been in this profession a lot, a lot of years now. Um, and I can guarantee you the phone's going to ring. You know, you just don't know when. It's just the nature uh, of these situations. And uh and he was absolutely ready to pick it up and did a great job. So now with Blake, uh, uh, you know, out for a little while, how do you envision things moving forward, Coach? Well, same thing. You know, we're going to continue to to work Ty and, and Braxton as well. You know, in the second half on Saturday, the offense was moving the football, and it really uh, didn't make a lot of sense to do anything at quarterback at that time. But we still want to continue to work Braxton and bring him along, you know, um, as we've talked about at length through the course of the season, you know, the best way for quarterbacks, you know, to get assimilated and be able to play in a game is, is to go play in games. So, you know, you know, looking for opportunities to, to grow Braxton in that capacity, uh, but, you know, also make sure that we are you know, doing a good job of, of continuing uh, to be cohesive on offense. So uh, I talked to coach Jasper last week and he said that at this point, if Braxton played, he'd, you might have to tailor the offense a bit toward him. Do you feel that's kind of the case? Yeah, to a degree, absolutely. You know, you want to give him things that he's most comfortable with, things uh, that, you know, as, as practice, as you go through the week of practice, that that he's, uh, you know, executing the best. Uh, and that way you're setting him up for success in the offense as well. Um, I saw that uh... – McMahon went out, but he came back in. Is, is that, Are you still fully healthy along the offensive line? Uh, we're a little dinged up, but that's kind of the nature uh, this time of year for offensive linemen. You know, they run into people on every play, so they, they get bumps and bruises as the season goes. Um, so we feel like we're going to be healthy going into Saturday. I know you're trying to work, you know, hard to get a second center ready after Lirion went down. Where do you stand with that and it, it, would you move a guy from guard to center if, if for some reason you had to spell Brent Self or maybe something happened to him? Yeah, we've been uh, repping Hoke Smith, the freshman at center. Uh, he's been getting a great deal of reps there and is doing a good job. Uh, he's also playing guard for us. Um, and then, of course, we have Mike Petroff, uh, you know, uh, who has uh, been around and, and a steady hand. So, you know, those guys – uh, would be the immediate backups, you know, just kind of based on, you know, the game and and uh, where we felt or who we felt would fit best based on the front and the personnel we were playing. Thanks. Yep. Joe Miller. Hey, Coach, I was going to ask, uh, you know, second, you know, obviously last week, two minute drill worked well again. That's the second time we've we've kind of seen that. What is what has worked well in those two minute offenses for you guys? Well, I think the guys have done a good job of of really the tempo, getting up to the ball, getting ready, um, understanding what we're trying to accomplish in the pass game as, as well as just the one-minute scenario itself. You know, that's something that we've worked very hard on going back to spring. Um, you know, I told Coach Newberry uh, when I got here and we started spring ball, I'll do one minute every day. I just think that it's a, it's a great opportunity, not just obviously to have success in a one minute situation, but there's so much football involved in a one minute drill um, and, and a great opportunity for guys to learn. And so uh, I'm thankful that we've been successful uh, in those situations. And, and uh, it's, it's definitely a result of a lot of hard work that we put into it as we went through spring and, and through camp. So uh, hopefully we'll continue to be able to, to execute well in that situation. I know you talked a little bit about Charlotte, but, you know, this was a you know new staff that came in there, a lot of new players with them. Have you seen them kind of evolve as the season has progressed 
um, at to this point as far from like week one to week five or six when they're working in a lot of different new guys too. No question at all. And, and you know, they, they are uh, much better than their record indicates. Uh, and you've seen progress uh, for their team, um, you know, from game one up to this point. Um, you know, you know, defensively, they're big and athletic. Uh, they run well, and uh, you know, so they're they're absolutely a a football team that's that's progressing and you know and, and moving in a positive direction from an execution standpoint. We talked a little bit about it last week, sort of trying to figure out how to get everybody involved. And you know, Nathan Kent makes a a, a great catch, and it it's how difficult it is for the receivers that, you know, obviously they're not getting the ball thrown to them 10 or nine or 10 times a game to sort of stay in the game. And what is that conversation? Is it more like, Hey, just, you know, you're blocking out there, you're going to get your chance or how do you keep them involved in the game? When you talk about the passing game, when you're maybe not getting, you know, seven, seven or eight targets a game. Well, I tell you what, coach Okada does a tremendous job with the culture in that room. Uh, those guys, you know, and the type of young men that we have here at the Naval Academy, you know, they're, they're big team, little me guys. Right. And so it really, um, it, it's been probably the quietest wide receiver room I've ever had, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, they, they just come to work every day. They take pride in anything we ask them to do. And, um, and candidly that encourages, uh, you know, that encourages me to, to try to find other ways to get them the ball, you know, because they're out there and, and they're doing all the dirty work and they're doing it with a great attitude and doing it at a high level. And uh, and they're all very capable uh, in the pass game. So, you know, definitely want to continue to look for opportunities to throw them the ball. And I know you got the win in, on, on Saturday, but I know you probably can't still be super excited about what you've been on third down. What needs to be better on third down for you guys? Yeah, I think, you know, execution and and then not getting behind the chains and getting in so many of those situations, you know, um, you know, it's uh, just being more disciplined. You know, that's, that's the big thing right now for us is, is having, having great poise throughout the game, particularly in situations like third downs. Thanks coach. Yes, sir. One note, um, maybe has five touchdown drives of less than a minute. That's the second most in the country. Only Old Dominion has more at nine. Pete Medhurst. Uh, just to piggyback on Joe's point, uh, Grant, first down success has seemingly been there. Uh, is that part of the frustration where you, you're getting exactly what you want on first down, and yet sometimes you end up in third and distant situations that uh, end up being longer uh, th than second down? It just seems something that, uh, has not happened around here uh, over the way it's happened the last couple of games. Yeah, so I think a lot of the or, or some of that circumstance has to do with uh, penalties on first down and getting behind the chains, you know, and, and you know, whereas when we don't shoot ourselves in the foot, then we get on schedule and then we sustain drives and, and you don't find yourself really in those third downs. Now, that being said, we did have some third and short situations that we have to do a better job of, of you know, staying on schedule, getting those short yardage first downs, um, you know, and, and keeping the chains moving. So, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, we do that uh, really uh, every Wednesday. We have a third down situation priority at practice. Uh, we've been doing that. We will continue to do that, uh, you know, and focusing particularly on those third and shorts and for potentially fourth and short situations. I know, you, I know you can rep it to death in spring and, and in camp working up to games, but there's nothing like game situations. How would you evaluate with five games now under your belt how much they've picked up of this offense and more importantly, their confidence and running it without thinking as opposed to just doing everything instinctively out there? Yeah, I still I think we've made a tremendous amount of progress. I think, you know, as we game plan week to week uh, and you're you're adding, you know, uh, you know, new plays or you're running the same plays versus different looks. You know, there's going to be an amount of familiarity as you continue to go through the season. But I, I do think we've made significant progress in that area. I think it's led to, you know, obviously our ability to score some points, um, you know, and, and have drives. But I, I do think it's continuing to evolve. We're, we're not where we need to be or want to be. But I do think we've made significant progress. Despite the progress over the three games, is it, is it is it in a way exciting to know that there are more points out there literally within inches 
uh, of this group right now. And, and, and obviously, as we know, more points obviously helps you uh, win the game a little bit more comfortably. But it, it seems, I mean, at least to the eye test, there are things that are just inches away as opposed to at times being a, a lot longer than that. Sure, absolutely. There's no question about that. You know, the guys have been seeing that and uh, throughout the season and uh, and it has really helped our confidence, you know, when they see, all right, if, if I do, you know, if I execute just slightly better, the result is going to be 14, 21 more points. And, and there's no question our players see that um, and, and their attention to detail is growing, uh, I would say, daily as a result. So, you know, all those things are very encouraging. You know, um, and I've said this before, I'm, I'm incredibly impatient, so I, I'm ready to put together a complete game. You know, um, it, it's, you know, I want to see us go out and, and finish drives and, and, and convert third downs uh, like I know we're capable of doing, you know, and, and I know our players do as well. So, uh, you know, through the first day of this week, you know, the energy has been great. I'm sure it'll be great again today and, and uh, the guys will go out and practice hard. Thank you, sir. Yep. Pete, I just love the great example you're set, setting by being fully buckled up despite uh, Park. Great job. Hey, man. Scott, whack <laughs> off. Coach, with the dead ball penalties, is that something just a player can think through and doesn't physically have to go through once you're working on that to try to get rid of that? Is that something they just have to mentally get into their head that, that those dead ball penalties have to end? Yes, absolutely. You know, it it, it is one of those things that um, – you know, typically happens with younger players because they are thinking. Uh, and, and you know, then we've had some really unusual circumstance. I think one of them uh, on Saturday, right before the, the cadence started, the referee screamed something and we flinched. I mean, it's, it's things that have come up that I just kind of shake my head about. I haven't really experienced uh, through the course of my career, some of the, for lack of a much better word, weirdness. Um, but it's really about poise. You know, it's really about being locked in. And, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, those things, they, they can't impact our ability to go execute. And our guys understand that. Do you see guys each week getting more confidence to, to be able to cut it loose more? Yes, absolutely. You know, you're seeing that uh, on, on a, you know, game-to-game -game basis. You're seeing our, you know, our ability to relax and go play. I thought early on in the season we were um, – worried about messing up. We were worried about making mistakes. Uh, and I think we are playing much more freely now, you know, much more, uh, you know, uh, confident. And so I think we're going to continue to improve. And is that too a byproduct of the players becoming more comfortable with you, not thinking that they have to please you constantly, that they just have to be a part of the process? Yes, I, I do. I think it's, you know, guys understanding that, you know, just go out and do your job, play with great effort, and attention to detail and great things are going to happen, you know, and, and uh, these guys are such outstanding young men that they are pleasers, you know, and I think finding a balance uh, in that, in, in that world has been important for us and, and day in day out communication on my part and our coaches part as well. Thanks. Yep. Wags. The, you know, Coach Manuberry said on Monday that he talked to you about the quick passing game and some things he wants to do there. Can you kind of tell me where, where you're at on that, what you and he discussed in general without giving away state secrets? Well, I think it's, you know, a lot of the ideas that I brought with me that we've been doing for years, you know, and just making sure that we're, we're working on implementing those. Um, you know, we have to go execute them better. You know, we had a couple opportunities where we threw, well, more than a couple, uh, where we threw some quick game on Saturday and we didn't complete them. And so, you know, when you're trying to stay on schedule and you're trying to sustain drives, you know, you got to make sure that you're calling things that will help you do that. So we just need to continue to work on the quick game. Uh, it's obviously a priority. It's something that, that I've done throughout my career that's really, really important to me and our offensive system. So we're going to continue to work on it and and uh, hopefully continue to grow and implement it. And as far as the downfield passing game, the play action, again, Saturday, open guys not connected with. Uh, how critical is this? These are touchdowns or plays that would set up possible touchdowns. Yeah, no question. You got to be able to throw and catch. 
Um, you know, we had some guys open and we just have to do a better job of, uh, you know, making the play, giving them a good ball to catch and, and the, you know, the receiver making the catch. So these are things that are repetition, obviously intensive. And, and uh, you know, we're definitely, I know you've come to some practices, so you, you know we're out there throwing the ball on a regular basis. Thanks, Coach. Joe. Yeah, Coach, I would ask about Anton Hall. It seems like the last three weeks he's kind of been, I don't know if it's just by chance or just the way you guys worked it inside the five-yard line. You've gone to him on a pass a couple weeks ago and the other two games on runs. Is he kind of a goal line, red zone kind of weapon for you guys? Well, we definitely used him down there. I, you know, I don't think that that's his only value at all. Sure. You know, I think he's done a good job and, uh, you know, because of the things we've been doing schematically in that in that area you know, has, has had opportunity. So, you know, that's great. And, you know, look, I was just looking at over the snap counts and, and everything. And it, it seems like Tesca and Fafana are pretty much even the last three weeks, you know, a game here, maybe one has five or six or, or another way. Is that something that you look at before the game or is this just something like after the game you go, Oh, well, in that situation, we needed them in there. Or do you kind of, do you plan that out before games in, in sort of setting up the, the, the game plan? Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, there are certain things that that we know strengths and weaknesses of both players. Sure. Uh, and we're trying to be intentional, uh, you know, with with getting guys the ball and, uh, you know, particular players. So, yes, there there's absolutely forethought going into a game, um, you know, as far as, you know, the number of touches and things with certain players we want to prioritize. 